Is he not father? Recently, we as horror fans have quite got an awesome watch list going for us. Thanks to Ari Aster, Mike Flanagan, and Jason Blum, but the journey of horror shows began a long time ago. In today's video, we decided to list 15 of the most popular horror TV series from the 70s that you should definitely check out. So let's turn back time and get spooky together. But before we go into explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Salem's Lot, 1979. If you're a huge Stephen King fan, then you obviously recognize the show's title. This series is based on King's novel, which has the creatures of the night as its main horror element. The basic premise of the story follows similar beats to those in the novel. You follow Ben Mears, played by lovely David Solg, who decided to return to Jerusalem's Lot, better known as Salem's Lot, where he grew up as a kid. Ben is a writer and he wanted to work on a novel. He decided he would write about the Marston House, an old building with which he had quite an awful experience as a child. He comes to town and quickly gets involved with Susan, a young teacher. However, there is something fishy about his hometown. Mr. Bolo, the owner of the Marston house, is seemingly never home, but his business partner, Mr. Stryker, always is. Why is the owner never home, and does his frequent so-called business trips have something to do with the recent disappearance of a young boy? Ben gets more and more involved in seeking the answers, and what he finds out is not a glittery like Bella Swan. For a show that was made in the late 70s, especially as a miniseries, this TV phenomenon definitely packed quite the punch. The sets are not cheap, the costumes are grandiose, and the way Toby Hooper directed the scenes, you will genuinely feel terrified. These bloodsuckers we see on screen were very much how I would imagine vampires to be. They're not glittering in the sun, and they're not having morally superior arguments about how we humans have misunderstood them. No, these undead creatures are out for one thing, and that is blood. One of the scariest scenes that I would have to mention was the scene of the vampires floating outside the window. If that is not creepy, I do not know what is. James Mason, who played Mr. Stryker, was born for the role. He carried himself with his air of threat surrounding him. His dialogues and expressions have a lot of subtle messages hidden in them, and these make the reruns of this show extremely fun. Kolchak, The Night Stalker, 1974-1975 When you think about horror elements, supernatural entities probably rank higher on the list, yes? Now, what happens if there is an investigator who keeps running into cases where the only way to explain a whole phenomenon would be these supernatural elements? Sounds fun, right? Well, Kolchak, The Night Stalker, is about an investigative reporter named Carl Kolchak, who keeps investigating reports that have supernatural elements in them. However, all the evidence that this character gathers ends up getting destroyed by the end of the episode, so despite knowing the answer, Kolchak just can't present them at the end of the day. With Darren McGavin playing the role of Kolchak, you cannot help but hope that in each episode Kolchak gets the evidence that he needs. But alas, the evidence gets destroyed inevitably, and Kolchak moves on to a new case. Kolchak the Night Stalker was like the X-Files of the 1970s. The show is a perfect mix between campy and adventurous, especially when you see the humorous interactions between Kolchak and Vincenzo. This was truly the maverick of the TV shows from that era. Instead of starring this rich, hot, handsome guy as the main protagonist, the show producers decided to give us Carl Kolchak, a man who is just like us and who is relatable. The way Kolchak is written plays a huge role in how we as fans perceive the whole show, and I have to say, the most important thing about him that really helps us relate to his personality has to be how he runs away whenever there is something truly life-threateningly terrifying. Beasts, 1976. This six-episode-long TV series, written by Nigel Neal, is like a handful of curated stories that you can enjoy. Each of the stories is spooky in its own way, and the variety this show gives us is something refreshing. From the animal ghosts to witchcraft, this ensemble has it all. It is clear from this series that Nigel Neal had a passion for the mysterious and the macabre, which was clearly shown. All the mysteries that the stories cover are always judged from the scientific lens, which is why when the supernatural 
cool stuff shows up, it gets extremely scary and sometimes even downright terrifying. One of the most popular episodes of this show has to be the episode titled Baby, which is about a young couple who moved into an old farmhouse. While renovating, the husband finds something strange in the wall, which scares the wife, but the husband decides to keep it with him in the house like a fool. What happens next? Well, you gotta watch yourself to find out because my words will not do this show enough justice. Dead of Night 1972. This TV series had only three episodes, but each of these episodes brought a different type of mystery to the plate. The series opens with a story about four wealthy friends who have shown up for a meal, but what they have no idea is that the house they are in is haunted and has a latent grudge. This led to their dinner being spoiled and one of them getting possessed. The show really does open with a bang because Anna Cooper, whose character gets possessed, plays the role so brilliantly that I had chills running down my spine. This TV show is often overlooked by people when they think of a horror TV series from the 70s. This was probably owing to the fact that this show was supposed to be seven episodes long, but only three of them are available for us to watch, owing to BBC purging its archives back in the day. However, in these three episodes, you can understand that there was thought put into the show. Each story is acted out to precision with sets that are realistic. Anna Cooper's possession scene is so phenomenal that I cannot suggest this show enough. Also, the other episode titled Weeping Lady also has exceptionally phenomenal acting by the lead lady, Anna Macy. In the story, she plays the role of an unhappy wife who has spent all her life being a homemaker and raising her children. However, she suddenly begins to hear a lady weeping, which is obviously not a good sign. It's another hog. Steady. One, two, all. Night Gallery 1969-1973 If you're looking for a low-budget thriller series, then you don't need to look any further. The Night Gallery fits the bill in all the ways. You know how the Twilight Zone changed up the whole game when it came to science fiction anthology series, right? Well, the Night Gallery did the same for horror anthology series. The episodes are creepy and chilling in their own way. Each episode has the creep and factor that we horror fans love so much. Even though it first aired, it was not super popular. Over the years, this show has become a cult classic. The show has a lot of aspects that can be considered outdated by the current standards of TV shows. However, that is what makes the show incredibly charming. When watching Night Gallery, I personally felt that this was the redefining moment for horror TV shows as we know them. And that's why I think this is worth the spot on this list. Ghost Story 1972 Ghost Story or Circle of Fear, as a lot of us have known to call it, is another horror anthology series that came out in the 70s. This show was unjustly tossed aside because, again, at the time of airing, it did not rack up a lot of ratings. Despite the negative reviews, when you look at the show right now, you will realize that its tone is quite ambiently chilling. Unlike The Twilight Zone, which is famous for its moralistic turns, Ghost Story is deceptively simple. There are no moralistic turns here. These episodes are just stories about people who get into frightening situations. Some deserved what they got, others did not. The premises of the stories were interesting, such as a grandfather giving his granddaughter a voodoo dollhouse, a murder victim seeking revenge through all of their body parts that had all been donated, and more. These stories were refreshing, and while this show is on the lower end of a lot of horror lists, I think it deserves a better spotlight for how it frightened its viewers. There is nothing more spine-chilling than a seemingly ordinary situation that gets turned upside down because of supernatural shenanigans. Supernatural 1977. As a horror fan, it would be a crime not to mention one of the most prominent gothic anthology horror series of the 70s in this list. Meet Supernatural. This horror series is based around the premise that there is a club known as the Club of the Damned. When a new member wishes to join this club, they have to tell a story to the existing members. If the story is frightening enough, they get selected. If this premise reminds you of the Midnight Club to a certain degree, well, you aren't the only one who sees the similarities. However, unlike the Midnight Club, where the members told stories with quite the modern vibes in them, this series focused more on the Victorian era. The old-timey stories that we see play out in front of our eyes are beautifully gothic and highly thrilling. The show has only eight episodes, but each of these episodes packs a punch. For me, the two most memorable episodes have to be Mr. Nightingale and Dora Bella. Mr. Nightingale is about a businessman who led a rather dull life until he was taken over and possessed by his doppelganger. This possession brought a little bit of fun to his life, but it also brought tragedy 
Timothy Ed Berner. Jeremy Brett mostly acclaimed for his role as Sherlock Holmes plays the titular Mr. Nightingale in this episode, and golly gee, he sure does a great job acting out as a possessed person. There is something so perfectly uncanny about him after he was possessed. On the other hand, Dorabella is about two friends who were traveling across the country when they met the beautiful and mysterious woman Dorabella. There is clearly more to her than what meets the eye, and the way her presence in her life slowly changes their friendship dynamic is astounding. I felt like I was watching a car crash, but I could not turn away. It is the perfect blood curdling experience for anyone who is into gothic horror stories. While it is hard to get your hands on this show, when you do, you will feel like all the trouble was worth it. Everything about this show screams iconic. From the casting, directing, set design, storytelling, quite everything that you could think about, it works perfectly well to give us the viewers a show that is worth remembering and talking about. I highly recommend it. Quinn Martin's Tales of the Unexpected 1977. One of the most obscure TV shows on our list has to be Quinn Martin's Tales of the Unexpected. This show featured eight stories that were presented to be quite simple, but by the end of the story you would learn about this fascinating twist, which may or may not leave you with a sinking feeling of dread. Quinn Martin's production created one of the most iconic episodes of this series known as No Way Out. In this story we follow John, a family man who is a sailor at heart, as he goes through his daily life. Over and over again, he prioritized his sailing adventures more than his family, and what do you know? He randomly disappears in the Bermuda Triangle. When he finally comes out of it, it is 1977, and it has been 25 years since his disappearance. How horrifying it must be to realize that you've missed out on 25 years of your son's life and your wife's life, and now they are happy without you. Bill Bixby played the role of John, and it is honestly heartbreaking when you see him realize that he can never go back in time to fix his relationship with his family. This is also where the horror element comes in because this episode forces you to acknowledge something that you might have been doing without caring about the consequences of your action. The show is remarkably good at making the audiences feel the pain and the horror that the characters are going through, along with a tinge of sadness that comes with it. Despite its obscure nature, I would have to say this is a show that is worth getting your hands on. The Evil Touch 1973 Australia is quite a horror minefield, not only because of its diverse nature, but also because of its directors. Sure, we all know about the horrific 2014 film Babadook, but did you know that back in the 70s, there was a TV show that the Australians produced that shook horror fans to the core? Let me present The Evil Touch to you. This was a horror anthology series that was produced by Mr. Ben Brown, and the stories that this man curated for his shows were just chef's kisses. At the same time, it was obvious that the show had its budgetary limitations, but that never stopped it from garnering quite the fan base owing to the nature of the storytelling. Darren McGavin, who we mentioned a few minutes ago, also appeared in this series. Here he played a heart surgeon who took a heart from a donor who was not dead yet. Then the heart surgeon gets haunted by the now dead man leading to more mayhem in his life. While the horror factor is not spine chilling, I think that this show brought all the campiness that we can expect from a 70s TV show. It had Anthony Quayle playing the suave and mysterious host, there is something awfully charming about a horror story that scares you as much as the evil touch does, and then a host pops out of nowhere and reminds you that there is an evil touch in all of us. If you're looking for campy horror goodness, this would be the best TV show to go for. Cliffhangers 1979. In my eyes, the one thing that amplifies the terror in horror stories is when there are cliffhangers. This allows us as viewers to sit and think about the fate of the characters, adding more to the horror aspect as well as the suspense. When it comes to the TV show Cliffhangers, that is exactly what the producers wanted. This show is truly one of a kind, and it is said that it did not get the recognition it should have. I believe that if this show was released now, it would become a fan favorite in no time. When you watch this show, you did not watch one show, no, you're actually watching three shows in one. This show was made to bring back the whole movie serial format of the TV series based on the game. So each one hour episode was divided into three 20, 20 minute segments, which were about three completely separate stories. The stories that we follow are The Curse of Dracula, Stop Susan Williams, and The Secret Empire. Each of these 20 minute segments ends on a cliffhanger, leaving viewers begging for more, which definitely adds to its charm. If you're looking for a show that would act as a palate cleanser, I definitely suggest you try this out.
Escape into the Night, 1972. In 1958, Catherine Starr gave us the novel Marion Dreams. After a decade, we got ITV's children's unique TV adaptation of the book known as Escape into the Night. This show is about Marion, who is bedridden after an accident with a horse. So as she lay in her bed, she decided to sketch out whatever she could think of. A house, a cemetery, rocks with one eye, you know, creepy kid shenanigans. But little did Marion know that all the things that she drew were coming to life. Once she had drawn a bleak house, the most horrific thing a child can imagine, she dreamt of it. In her dreams, she met with Mark, another young boy whose health was way worse than hers. Her creation led to this weird dream turning into a reality where she could meet with Mark and talk to him. But it's not all hunky-dory because remember those rocks with one eye? Well, those rocks are after the two kids, excitedly waiting to crush them. With each nightmare, the stones come closer and Marion has only one way of stopping them, by hanging the drawings. However, the effect of changing the drawings may not come out exactly as expected. Because this was marketed as a kid's show, the series is very terrifying. Even as an adult, if you were to rewatch the series, you would realize that the horror aspect of the show does not lie to monsters who look like rocks but lies more so in the helplessness of the kids as they have to outsmart these nightmarish creatures. The book is iconic and the show is memorable. It is definitely one of the scariest kids shows out there. Leap in the Dark, 1973 to 1980. Leap in the Dark is a paranormal-oriented show. This ran for 24 episodes and it was divided into four series. Each of these series showed us a different aspect of the paranormal activities that we enjoy so much. The first series was in documentary format, allowing us to feel like we were watching someone's life being turned upside down thanks to supernatural elements. The fourth series was very much like the original dramatization of paranormal stories. The second and third series fall right in the middle, striking a balance between the documentaries and the dramatizations. The episodes were written by famous writers like Faye Weldon, Russell Hoban, and David Rudkin. The reason I mentioned this series in the list is because of the central theme of the show. The show delves deep into what ghosts are. The main theme of the show is how a ghost is a remnant, a loss, and a defeat. It is something that you carry with you when you have to go but do not have the strength to take it all with you. This is such a macabre yet beautiful way to look at ghosts, which we usually associate with vengeance and anger. Shout out to Juon, The Grudge, and Ringu. So if you're looking for a rather poetic and understanding yet grounded argument reading the existence of ghosts, then you should definitely watch this series. Armchair Thriller 1978 to 1981. Since 1967, three series have been released under the title of Armchair Thriller. Each of these series had gripping stories that had the audience sitting on the edge of their seats. The show was a nicely balanced mix of original stories as well as already written novels, but the series released in 1978 is the most famous. One of the worthy novel adaptations we see in the Armchair Thrillers has to be A Dog's Ransom. This was adapted from the bleak novel written by Patricia Highsmith. This story is about a couple whose pet dog gets kidnapped and they are forced to accept the demands of the kidnapper. But by the end of the show, it is not the good that triumphs, it is the evil that ends up reigning triumphant, which showcases the psychopathology of the novel. My favorite episode of the series is Rachel is in Danger. Rachel is a young girl who has decided to move in with her father, whom she has not seen in a long time. But the man she is with is not her father, but a terrorist who is posing as her father. It is bone chilling for us viewers as we see the young girl girl walk into the arms of what can be considered literal danger personified, but fear not, the child manages to outsmart them and it is such a thrilling ride. This show has had an amazing run and it is critically claimed as one of the more notable thriller anthology series, so if you suddenly have a craving for some thrilling nights, you should definitely consider watching this. Shadows of Fear, 1970-1973 Psychological horror happens to be one of the most predominant parts of the horror genre, which used to get overlooked quite a bit. I mean, the supernatural horror stories did have their charm, I will not lie about that, but there is something about the psychological horror stories that just hit differently. If you are in the same boat with similar taste preferences as mine, then you will love the show that I am about to describe. Shadows of Fear was a psychological horror anthology series written by Roger Marshall and Kim Bills 
both of whom have contributed heavily to the Avengers. The first four episodes were written by Roger Marshall, and the pilot episode of the series, titled Did You Lock Up, starred the phenomenal Michael Craig and Gwen Watford. They played a couple who got burgled, but since the burglary, the husband is unable to rest easy until he gets to see the criminals behind bars. So when the police force showed their lack of interest in this work, he decided to take matters into his own hands. This story is pretty simple, but from a psychological aspect, it had a lot of layers that were quite interesting to watch unfold on screen. <laughs> Thriller 1973-1976 Brian Clemens saw the market that Shadows of Fear tapped into and decided to try his luck with his same taste profile when he produced his show, Thriller. With a star-studded cast of John Carson, Joanna Dunham, and a lot more, the show was a hit. Unlike Shadows of Fear, where the stories were relatively simple, Thriller focused more on exploring the layers of psychological horror, in my opinion. As a viewer, while watching the show, you never really feel safe. The sense of ease that a viewer feels while watching a horror, knowing that they are not the one in harm's way is stripped away meticulously by the show. The show leaves you with an eerie feeling of despair as time goes by and the plot thickens. The show deserves its cult status because of everything it gives. It is a series that genuinely provides the fans with what they see. Sure, it can be a bit dated when you watch now, but even then, if you're someone who does not mind a bit over-the-top acting which looks pretty old school, you will find the show charming in its way. There is an aspect of crime, excitement, and plot twists in every episode. Some episodes might land a bit flat on you, but that is primarily because of too many things happening, which is always better than the lack of anything happening. Marvelous Verdict With that, my friends, we come to the end of this video. I have to admit that as an avid horror fan, I enjoyed watching these shows quite a bit. They all have their unique selling points owing to the type of horror they resented. So even though almost all of the themes have supernatural elements as the primary source of fear, there was no monotony. I feel like the saying old is gold rings quite true for the 70s horror shows. Do let us know which one you enjoyed the most out of the lineup and what your fond memories with these shows happen to be. As always, if you liked our content, Content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.